So we're all really excited about the new digital technologies curriculum. Finally, we get an excuse to bring in robots, woo, to learn to code, to learn about computational thinking and design. Amazing. A great valid opportunity to talk about technology in the classroom. But we mustn't forget all the other places that we still use technology. English, has science across the curriculum, and that includes digital technologies. And more importantly, we shouldn't be forgetting the ICT general capability. Any time you pick up a piece of technology in your classroom and ask your students to use it, they should be operating in that continuum, in that circle. They should be talking about the social and ethical protocols and practices involved in using technology. And they're really important, vital skills for them for life. For example, what do you know about intellectual property, copyright, creative commons? If you take an image off Google and pop it onto your worksheets, your PowerPoint, your interactive whiteboard slides, what are you teaching your students there about intellectual property? What if you then put the URL underneath that, you know, to make sure that it's very clear where you got that from? Or maybe you even reference the images with Harvard. Is that the legal way to go about it? What's Creative Commons? How can your students make sure that their ownership of their work is clear? That they enable other people to take it, to use it, to share it, to inspire with it? Do you know how to do that? Do you do that with your work when you share resources? What about if you're doing flipping the classroom and you choose to take a video from YouTube and give it to a student in a different format? What does that say about your ethics? What are you modeling there to your students? And then of course, there's things like viruses, ransomware, trojans, worms, the skills they need to avoid getting their computer filled with things that are going to put them and their data at risk. What about things like Email literacy, attachments, is a zip okay to open? Um, you know, what kind of things do we need to look at when we go to a website and we want to download some software? If there's a green, big green button that says download now, is that what you press? How do you know? What about incognito browsing, cache and data storing? What kind of things do your students need in order to be safe when they leave your classroom and to operate ethically in the world that they actually live in, not the school? but the real world. Because in that continuum, we start by holding their hands and being very strict with the rules, but eventually we have to let them go and try to take risks and use the skills that hopefully they've been taught in earlier years to protect themselves. How do we in even enable those risks to happen? How do we create environments online where it's okay to make a risk, to talk to somebody we don't know? How do you connect with NASA so that they come into your classroom and help you talk about sciencey things? How do you connect with the author of the book you're studying right now? What about the Microsoft education programs where you can connect with educators all over the world and schedule a talk with their class? Those are all unknown audiences, but they're safe places for us to make sure that our students can take risks in a safe way and practice the skills that they've been taught. Of course, there's also the impacts of ICT on society. You know, there's amazing things happening out there in the world. Cars that drive themselves, glasses that are telling blind people what they can see, what they can't see, so they can start using visual clues that they've never had access before. There's also very negative things, like if I want the iPhone 6 or the iPhone 6S six months later, what's the impact on the environment? What about the personal security and safety? How, am I sitting upright? Is my back in danger? Is my neck creaked? What about all of this stuff? Every time we use technology, these conversations should be happening in one form or another. Not always in as much detail as I've said, because it depends where on the continuum they are. But what do you know about the continuum and where your students are and what you can expect from them and what their next teacher is going to expect from them? If anything about what I've just said piques your interest, makes you curious for yourself or for your students, then maybe you should consider coming along to my next PD. We're doing it after school at 4.30 till 7 at Seton and we're calling it PD and Pizza. We're doing it in two sessions and we're going to spend about five hours in total across those two sessions going over the ass assessing um, social and ethical protocols and practices. And we're going to learn something together. Hopefully we're going to keep sharing resources. We have this great, Word doc uh, great Google document that we've been growing every time we run this course and we'd love for you to join in. So grab a ticket and I'll see you soon. If you've got any questions, fire away.